Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today's episode is dedicated to letting go of the past. Your most priceless possession is your mind. And what you are doing with it at this instant, right now, is incredibly important. Not what you did with it yesterday or a number of years ago. Mind is invisible, but it's now activity is visible to all who know you. The only form of life that hangs on to the past is human. As Raymond Charles Barker explained, when nature has brought in colder weather in the autumn, the leaves fall. They fall because the tree has finished its annual cycle and it needs them no more. The tree has no fear as it lets go of each leaf. It has no regret at letting go of something that has served its purpose. The leaves will never return, but there will be new leaves in the spring to serve a new purpose. We cannot endow the tree with memory of past winters and past springs because memory is an emotional experience. We are the only form of life that has memory as we know it. Lesser forms of animals can be taught to run through a maze or perform other feats, which they have learned through trial and error, usually supplemented by a reward. The animal world operates to a great extent by instinct. Instinctively, certain creatures hoard food for the winter, and instinctively they stop hoarding when spring arrives and food is plentiful. All of us often involuntarily hang on to the past. We hoard our old memories in our subconscious mind, where they may lie dormant for a long time, and if they are negative, they may suddenly pop up to trouble us. Memories of pleasant or worthwhile experiences are never harmful. Those of you who have undergone psychotherapy or psychoanalysis know how astounded you were at some of the old thought patterns and beliefs that were unearthed in the process. Many of them were frightening and you did not want to face the fact that you've been storing up destructive motivations in your subconscious for years. Perhaps you've been hoarding a great many negatives since early childhood. This does not apply only to people who have distressed minds. It applies to everyone. Those of us who are quite well adjusted to life and able to function quite normally have reserved some storage space in the subconscious for old memories and often when we least expect it one of these phantoms from the past comes to light. As Dr. Joseph Murphy illuminated many times that the subconscious mind is a treasure house of infinite power and wisdom but like any treasure house, it must be tended to with care. For it can also hold on to the debris of yesteryear, cluttering our present and barricading our future. Why is it so important to let go of the past? The past can be a seductive siren, luring us into its comforting embrace with the haunting melodies of what was. It whispers tales of bygone days, some sweet, some bitter, yet all are gone. To live in the past is to walk in a world that no longer exists, to plant our feet in the shifting sands of time that has already slipped through the hourglass. You must not allow the past to control your present or your future life. You must live in the moment. In our journey through the corridors of time, we often find ourselves looking over our shoulders, fixated on the shadows of what has been. Reality is a mirror of our inner states, our thoughts and beliefs. It is within this understanding that we find the importance of releasing the past. To let go of the past is to free ourselves from an invisible burden that colors our world with the hues of experience that are no longer alive. It is to acknowledge that we are not our history. We 
are the creators of our destiny. The past is like a worn-out garment, familiar, yes, but no longer a fit for the life we wish to lead. The significance of shedding the weight of yesterday lies in the fact that imagination creates reality. When we are mired in the past, our imaginative powers are confined to a script that has already been played. We become like actors replaying the same tragic scene, unable to find the exit from the stage of our own making. Because holding on to the past is like trying to drive forward while staring in the rearview mirror. You're bound to crash into what's ahead of you because you're not looking at where you're going. Our past can be a heavy anchor, and if we don't cut it loose, it drags us down, preventing us from reaching the full sail of our potential. More importantly, the past is a construct, a tapestry of memories woven with threads of events that are no longer occurring. Yet we clutch at them with fervor as if they are the very fabric of now. The past can be a source of wisdom, yes, but it can also be a specter that haunts our present, a ghostly presence that stifles the breath of the new. Stuck in the past, we become like Sisyphus, eternally pushing the boulder of bygone days up the hill, only to watch it roll back down again. We see lovers lost in the reverie of an old romance, artists trying to recapture an initial acclaim, technologists obsessing over outdated innovations. They are not present. They are time travelers stuck in a loop, a Mobius strip of the mind. We must release the chains of bygone days, the past, with its myriad faces can be an unwelcome echo in the halls of our minds, a reverberation of times that have long since faded. It's critical because in the tapestry of our existence, the past can be a stain that obscures the beauty of what's to come. It can become the default lens through which we view our present and our future. Being stuck in the past is akin to walking through a gallery of our life's artwork only to stop at the canvases that depict scenes we wish had been painted differently. It's the entrepreneur who laments a venture that failed, the lover who mourns a romance that ended, the dreamer who watches the ghosts of opportunities that slipped through their fingers. These individuals are living in the echoes, not the sounds of the present. I frequently do a considerable amount of reading at night. Occasionally I pause and look out the window, and in that moment of relaxed attention, quite often, some long buried negative pops through the trap door of my mind. It may be a problem that I haven't thought of for years, or it may be a fairly recent hurt or resentment. It arrives at my conscious level of mind with power and authority. It wants me to do a repeated performance. Something that hurt my feelings wants me to be saddened all over again. Someone I didn't like wants me to hate all over again. It is quite possible for me to take 15 minutes and review the whole episode, get myself all worked up, and become emotionally involved once more with something that once forgotten should stay forgotten. I am well aware, and you should be too, that old hurts and old rejections arrive at the threshold of consciousness in order to get out. If you take your hands off, and by that I mean stop reviewing and rehearsing the past events, you can help that negative out. Get out of your subconscious mind. Say something like this, get out of my life. You have come this far, go out into the nothingness where you belong. You have finished your act, I want you no more. Or you can say, I freely let go of the past, I freely let go of that which yet will be, I am a now person in a now experience. Consider the person, and I know that you have met them. Perhaps you have one person in your life like this, who holds on to a past love, their heart entwined with memory so tightly 
that new love will never blossom. Or the individual who clings to an old grievance, nursing it like a dark ember that refuses to die, consuming their peace and joy. There are so many examples of being stuck in the past and being a prisoner within our own mind. Those among us who, like ancient mariners, navigate by the stars of bygone eras, never realizing the stars have shifted. They are individuals who cannot forgive a past wrong, who replay old arguments in their minds, who bask in the faded glory of their younger days, or who nurse old wounds allowing the scars to define them. They are stuck in a loop, their imaginative power harnessed to a time that no longer exists save within their own minds. So how do we break this cycle? How do we let go of the past and sail towards a future bright with promise? Neville Goddard offers us several keys. Assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled means letting go of the past. Imagine how it feels to be free from the chains of the past. What joy blooms in your heart. What peace enfolds your mind? Dwell in the state of having already moved on, of already being the person who has transcended their history. Practice revision. Take an event from the past that haunts you and rewrite it in your imagination. See it unfold in a way that brings peace or closure. Through this act, you're not changing the past necessarily. You are changing the impact it holds over you and the way that your imagination creates your future based upon that past event. Neville Goddard claimed that you were actually changing the past, but you could also argue the past doesn't exist anyway. So you have to let your imagination be the torch that lights the path into a new dawn. Picture yourself in a reality where the past has no grip on you. Feel the liberating sensation of forgiveness not just towards others but towards yourself forgive yourself for the times you have stumbled for the opportunities missed for the words left unsaid embrace the present for it is the only moment that truly belongs to us in the present our power is limitless our potential untapped it is in the present that we plant the seeds of our future, not with the hands of action alone, but with the fertile soil of our imagination. Our past does not define us. It is but a series of lessons. Letting go of the past is an act of profound love and freedom. It is the ultimate expression of faith in ourselves and in the infinite nature of our existence. If we want to change our lives, we have to raise our standards and change the stories we tell ourselves. To let go of the past, we must first make a decision. A real decision means committing to achieving a result and then cutting yourself off from any other possibility. When doing that, that oftentimes means letting go of your past. So begin by redefining your story. Acknowledge that the past has happened. Even if you revise it, you're not denying it. You're changing your internal imaginative memory of it, but you're also not allowing it to pilot your future. It's about taking control, about deciding your neural impact, about deciding that you're no longer going to let past hurt Past failures or past disappointments control your destiny by becoming literal neural pathways that are forged as imprints within your mind. Create a vision for your future that excites you, that is not tied to your past. How much of your future vision is tied to overcoming the past or doing something from your past Create a vision of your future that excites you, that has nothing to do with your past. If your future doesn't look better than your past, 
then what's the motivation to move forward? You have to visualize your goals with such clarity and detail that they seem within reach. Are those goals that you're visualizing based upon your past? If you have a goal to get back at an old boss for what he did, to get back at an old boyfriend by finding a new relationship, and you are creating your vision based upon some precedent from the past, that I promise you, it will not ultimately fulfill you or excite you. Oftentimes I find people that are creating visions of their future based entirely upon the past. To get back at someone? To overcome something? What if you freed yourself from the past entirely and you are free to do whatever you wanted and the past had nothing to do with it? Visualize your goals with such clarity and detail that they seem within reach. But visualize goals that have nothing to do with your past. We must always feed our mind. And if we are feeding our mind with the past, it is not very nutritious at all. Just as you feed your body with nutritious food, if you wanted to change your health, feed your mind with inspiration, knowledge, and new experiences if you want to move past your old story. It's about physiology. Change your body, your posture, your breathing, and you can change your state of mind. Much of our body, our posture, and our breathing is tied entirely to our past. So you can begin to let go of your past by changing your physiology. Stand tall, breathe deeply, move with a purpose, and your emotions will follow your physiology. The leaves will fall. Model the behaviors of those who have successfully moved on from their past. How do they speak? How do they act? What do they read? There are people that have had terrible, terrible things happen to them in the past. And they have been able to move on and have wonderful lives. People that experience genocide. Incredible torture. The most horrifying traumas that you can imagine. Emulate those who are successful in releasing the past and you can replicate this success in your own life. To let go of the past is to embrace the truth that life is not happening to you, it's happening for you. Every moment, every encounter, every challenge is an opportunity to grow stronger, to become more, to move forward with a momentum that is unstoppable. You have to let go of the anchors of our past we have to set our sights on the horizon of possibility and steer our lives toward the future we know we deserve. The process of letting go of the past definitely begins with forgiveness. Forgiveness of others and critically of yourself. Forgiveness is to give something for. Give yourself peace. Give yourself freedom. Give yourself a future unchained from the past. Affirm to yourself, I release the past and dwell in the joy of the present. I am at peace. Visualization is a powerful tool that you can use. So for a moment, picture yourself as a vessel filled to the brim with the past. Now imagine a golden light, the light of awareness and understanding shining upon you. As this light grows brighter, the past overflows and spills out leaving you empty, ready to be filled with new experiences, new joys, new successes. You can say, I am released from the chains of the past. I move forward with freedom and grace. Believe in these words, for in belief lies the power. I've met people that say, I simply can't let go of my past, Brian. It's impossible. They've done hypnosis, they've done therapy, but then they start affirming something like that and they start to believe in it. In releasing the past, we must embrace the present, engage fully with life as it is now, take up new hobbies, forge new relationships, set new goals. As you fill your life with the new, the old will naturally fall away, like the leaves of autumn making way for the promise of spring. Let go of the past to affirm life it is to say yes to the infinite possibilities that await us. It is to walk in the light of awareness, wisdom, and understanding. 
Let us move forward together with open hearts and minds into a bright future that beckons us all. That bright future means letting go of the past. When you turn on the TV or look in your social media right now, you'll see all kinds of wars and hatreds. Guess where these wars and hatreds are coming from? They're coming from people that are obsessed with the past. It's in politics. It's in governments. It is in histories and cultures. Imagine if we all let go of our past and decided to come together, letting go of our resentments, letting go of our distortions. To release the past, Jason Silva suggests we must hack our cognitive operating systems. We must rewrite the narrative. The brain is a storytelling machine and the story we tell ourselves becomes the life we lead. You want to move forward, change the story, realize that every day is a new scene and you are the writer, the director and the lead actor. Immerse yourself in the flow of the present. It's the ecstatic truth, the rapture of being alive. You can find that in the now. Take a moment. Take a deep breath. Feel the pulse of your heart, the energy coursing through your veins. This is life, and it is happening right now. Indulge in new experiences. Let novelty flood your senses. Why did we enjoy our childhood so much more? It's because we had less of a past. Indulging in new and wonderful experience, playing, this is not mere distraction. It is an act of recontextualization. By embracing the new, we dilute the old. We allow the brain to form new connections, to build new neural pathways. And what about our memories, these precious keepsakes? Transform them. We are the alchemists of our own experience. Transmute the pain of the past into lessons, into stepping stones. Use them to propel yourself into a future ripe with possibility. Remember, we are explorers, not just of the physical realm, but of the mental one. To explore, we must move, we must evolve. And evolution is not just a matter of the body, but of the mind and the soul. Embrace the concept of possibility is to live with an openness to the emergent, to the becoming, to the unfolding of life. Let us unhook our tethers and push off into the vastness of now with eyes wide open to the awe of existence. And we can only do that by letting go of the past. I urge you to step in to the quantum reality of possibilities where every moment is a new birth of potentialities. To let go of the past is to embrace this quantum field where all different futures exist simultaneously until one is observed into being. We must acknowledge the past, observe it, learn from it, then use the power of our intention Set our sights on a new horizon, not with a mere wish, but with a potent declaration of intent. Your intention is your rudder into the vast sea of potential. With this intention, with this new horizon, we can revise the past, we can re-see it, we can tell ourselves a new story. And when we do this, we give ourselves permission to engage in the mental rehearsal of our desired future. We can then visualize it with such intensity that the universe begins to weave it into the fabric of reality. You must unlock the chains of the past in order to enter into this unlimited field of possibilities. Say it with me. I release the past and embrace the future. Repeat it. Let it become the mantra that echoes in your mind's corridors. 
don't just be a passive observer of this process. Involve your senses, envelope your emotions, and act as if the future you desire is already unfolding. This is the act of faith that bridges the gap between the world of thoughts and the world of experience. The past is simply a construct, a memory trace, and nothing more. It is not the grand architect of our lives. We are. Letting go of the past is our declaration of independence, our moment of stepping into the role of the Creator. Let us boldly claim our right to craft a future unfettered by the past, a future that aligns with our greatest intention and our highest good. That's what the tree does. When it grows new leaves and old leaves die, it is the natural formulation of the universe. Understanding this, that emotions are creating our future. We must evaluate the emotional impact of our memories. It is extremely difficult to forget anything that hits us with an emotional impact. We can forget the trivial. We can forget the casual. But we do not easily let go of things that are delivered into our minds under heavy emotion. Emotion is the key to life. It is the law of living. This is why the ancient teaching that the primary aspect of God is love may be more important than the aspect of a divine mind with any other quality. It is well established psychologically that the only thing that really affects us is emotion. We are emotional people and emotion is the creative power of the mind. This is why balanced religion has always taught the power of love. One of the reasons why the teachings of Jesus caught on so quickly in the Roman Empire was that he was a symbol of love. He was not a symbol of war or hate. Being the symbol of love, he interested people much more than did their old gods of hate and war. Emotions are the cornerstone of life. Yesterday carries into today only through our emotions because the memory field is a field of emotional memory. This is why you cannot remember a casual incident that happened 10 years ago, but you can remember a heartbreak or some equivalent unpleasantness that shook you up emotionally at that time. The remembrance of the evils of the past is a part of the nature of the mind until the mind is cleared through spiritual treatment, through imagination, through visualization and the things we've talked about. Nature arranged this because nature expects its creation to clear its own thought. Man is the creation of God as mind. You and I have not sought to clear our minds at all times. We have wanted someone else to do it for us. Down through the ages, men and women have devised many ways, many paths, many prayer books, many prayer wheels, many statues, many novenas and saviors, because they wanted someone else to clear their thought, when of course this cannot be done. You stand isolated like an island. You are you. You are not the savior, the prophet, or the saint. You are you. I am that which I am and I never can be less. Therefore, if I am that which I am, then no man can clear my thought but myself. No one can change my belief but my own mind. No one can get rid of the past save by deliberately saying to the past, Be gone, thou art no longer a part of me. I have to say to that which emotionally crippled me 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or 3 days ago, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. Just remember that emotion binds and retains and holds. What you do not want to remember is held in memory by emotion and not by common sense. You can say to it, I no longer give you the idea any more emotional support. I declare that you have operated in me long enough. You have managed me long enough. I now declare that you convert yourself into a positive, healthy emotion. This is turning fear into faith rejection into acceptance, disease into health, hate into love, water into wine. This can be done. You take the hurt out of life by first admitting you have it. You get something understanding of why you have it. And finally you say, I will now withdraw my need for it. I no longer need to justify the present by the past. I no longer need to justify my present inadequacies merely on the basis of something that happened years or even weeks ago. I am emotionally interested in the new concept of what I am. 
and I refuse to remember what I was. I am intrigued by what I can become, and I no longer need to remember the hurts that made me what I was. This is tremendously important. Most people do not like what they are. Therefore, they revert to the past rather than accept the present. When you accept yourself as life living this day, as mind thinking this day, and as love living this day, you do not need to go to the past. Jesus said, No man, having put his hand to the plow and turning back, is fit for the kingdom of God. A plow moves forward. The person behind the plow has to know where he is going. He has to know where to turn around to come back. He is so busy knowing what is to be done that he does not need to look behind him to see the furrow that he has finished. Life is the progressive action of the now, becoming the future. In order to move from here to there, I have to take up the anchors that I put down to keep me where I have been. Many people feel that it is very comfortable to be anchored somewhere. The anchor drags in the past. It deters them. They find that they are not moving forward, yet they do nothing about it until wisdom comes to the fore. Then they pull up the anchors, the negatives that are holding them down, and they are able to go full steam ahead. Having made the start, it is possible to become so fascinated with the course ahead that you completely forget about the point from which you have come. When this happens, you can say to the hurts of yesterday, I can't remember you except as an incident. You can say to the future, I grasp you. I want to go in a creative, progressive action forward impelled by a mind that is God and a life that is lived, a love that is great, and a power that responds to the good. Accept the memories of the great experiences which brought you joy. They need not be erased because they are valuable and the emotions that created them will hold them fast. It is only the negative, destructive memories that need to be let go. Unless those positive memories are holding you in a present where you're pining for the joys of the past so that you can't experience the joys of the present. The past holds power as long as you feel that the past is greater than the present. As long as you nourish the past so as not to have to compete with the present, the past has you enthralled. The way to be rid of the past is to see it as experience and growth and nothing else. But we are so enmeshed in the personalities of the past, the situations of the past, that we slip from the present into the past and we become past people working in the present. There are two interesting simple sentences of scripture written by the first Isaiah who wrote the first third of the book of Isaiah at a time when the people were in captivity in Babylon. It was a time of great spiritual progress even though they were very unhappy living not as slaves but as a foreign minority in a distant country and they wanted to go home. Like most of us, these people talked about the past, the good old days. And they kept saying to themselves, oh, if only things could be the way they were. They lamented, they wept, and the older gentleman kept on saying, oh, if only we could have things as they were. It is then that Isaiah speaks up saying, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? His meaning is clear. If your attention is so fixed upon the old patterns, the old habits, the things that used to be, that people used to be, then you will not even see the new that I make. Remember ye not former things, Isaiah said. Neither consider the things of old. Why? Because I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? What Isaiah said hundreds of years ago applies equally well to us today. You and I are the people of that which shall be. We are not the people of that which has been. I did want to briefly mention the recapitulation meditation. Some people struggle with this, so it's not for everybody. I found it to be very effective. And shaman would use this particular technique as a way of releasing energy from the energy body. As we've said, if you let the dead body sit in the basement, it will start to smell. So you have to get rid of it. So sometimes people simply can't forget about the past without bringing it up, acknowledging it, and then letting it go. Recapitulation involves actually pulling up the memory of the past experiences, evaluating it from multiple perspectives, seeing it in a movie theater, vividly experiencing it, but then limiting it, shrinking it, making it black and white, and then revising it. If you go through this simple process, 
you end up releasing those past experiences that are tied to emotions and it also releases from the energy body it's not for everyone some people simply should not dwell on their past because it's creative as long as you sage the area and that you make some sort of positive intention or manifestation when you do this I believe that it's very effective in eliminating the past from coming up because of emotional connections that are related to neural pathways in your mind you have let stuff go there are things you've let go already how did you do it so say these affirmations with me to start the process of reprogramming your subconscious mind whenever you have the past come up say these affirmations remember them perhaps one of these makes your heart sing and you can remember that and say that when the past seems to be affecting your present say I release the past with ease and trust in the process of life I am willing to forgive forgiving myself and others releases me from the chains of the past I choose to let go old negative patterns no longer limit me I let them go with love I am free from the burden of my past each moment is a new beginning I let go of fear I let go of pain I live in love my heart is open I allow myself to feel the fullness of joy and the possibility of a positive future I lovingly release all things that no longer serve me I am ready to heal and move forward I trust my journey my future is bright and filled with joy the past is over I am at peace with what was what is and what will be I'm worthy of a future that is shaped by love not by my past hurts as I let go of the past I make room for love and happiness to enter my life anew I am supported in my healing journey the universe is with me at every step today I step into my future with strength and clarity the past has no power over me with every breath I release the anxiety and anger of what has been and welcome peace and love into my heart I let go of regret and I embrace the lessons that have led to my growth and transformation so go out into the day in the now enjoying the now letting go of the past and creating a bright new future you are the architect and never forget the leaves must fall you can find all episodes of the reality revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to the reality revolution